So we're back uh, in part two of uh, the Thousand Eyes Endpoint Agent. Just to recap, we just talked about uh, uh, our new product, the Thousand Eyes Endpoint Agent, which uh, allows you to uh, understand and monitor uh, the end user experience around both the application and all of the rich network context that's required to really understand application delivery holistically. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take you through a couple of examples here. Um, the first one is, uh, we're going to do a little bit of the role playing thing here. So uh, in this case, I'm going to play both the, the IT help desk and the, the hapless end user who calls up and, and has some network problem. And so um, I've, called, I've called myself up and I've said, hey, you know, I was using, I was trying to use Zendesk uh, last night and it was working okay initially. And then uh, a little while later when I went back, uh, it slowed down. And in fact, you know, everything kind of slowed down. And so what happened? And so if you think about what would you usually do in this scenario, well, number one, you'd probably go, okay, well, hopefully it doesn't happen again. Call me if, call me if it does. Uh, or if you really got pressed, you might want to try and go back in some logs or try and recreate the problem, but you don't have that history, right? So, so now, uh, let's say I've gotten this, this information in an email and I'm an, uh, an IT help desk uh, engineer. What I can do is I've gone into uh, the, the Thousand Eyes dashboard. I've already pre-filtered, uh, as Martin showed, you can filter by a lot of different things here. Uh, I've pre-filtered by my computer and the domain thousandeyes.zendesk.com. And so you can see there's not a lot of traffic here, but uh, if I zoom in on this particular time frame, uh, you'll see, number one, you can kind of see that the latency was not a problem early on, but then later on there was actually gaps in the data and then there was very high latency, which indicates, okay, fair enough, you probably did have a network problem of some sort. Um, and you can see each of these are five minute time slices. Uh, but what I really want to start and show you initially is the session details. This is typically where you'd start out uh, troubleshooting this kind of a problem. And so I, I have a look at you know, the first one here, and I see that, okay, it w I was on my MacBook Air. I was connecting through my home Wi-Fi. Signal quality was all good. Loss and latency was low. No problem with loss and latency to the, to the visited site. And if I jump down there, I can actually see all of the pages that I was going to. Clearly, I was doing some, uh, some research on the endpoint agent. Uh, and obviously, I can load the waterfall data for this as well. Uh, so things look good here, which, which correlates with what they've said happened. If I jump a little farther into where things start to look like they go hairy, and then I, uh, I click down. Okay, well, this is interesting. This, this looks very different than, than what we were just looking at. Looks like the user neglected to tell me that they connected to a VPN in between uh, when things were good and things were bad. Um, maybe they very frequently connect and disconnect, so they weren't thinking about it, but... This is context that, that I wouldn't have known uh, unless I have this historic view. And obviously it looks like that, net, that VPN connection is uh, problematic because I'm seeing much more loss and latency there and then to the, to the end result, the visited site, uh, things are, are, it's almost doubled the page load time. Um, so, but you know, I know my network pretty well and I click on the VPN bubble here and the server address I see isn't the one I'm expecting to see from a customer who's calling in from North America. So that kind of tips me off that something's a little weird here. Um, I, I expect that VPN in North America should be just fine. Uh, so this is where I might jump to the network view and dig a little deeper <coughs> and see if I expand this out a little bit. Aha. Well, there's a lot of hops, number one. So this seems problematic. Uh, and a neat thing here is if you're looking at multiple clients to multiple destinations, this would look better, but I can quick select the underlay network and how I'm connecting to my VPN service, not just that I'm connecting to a VPN service, which is really neat. So, um, so what I see here, if I kind of follow the, the hops, is you know, I, I left out on Comcast, and if I go a little farther, uh, suddenly now I'm going through, it looks like a Japan, <laughs> Uh, farther now I'm, in, now I'm in Australia. So this is kind of strange. I didn't expect this. And now if I go back and I look through my list of VPN services, I realize that, oh, 
they were connecting to the Australia VPN ser server. And when I respond back and say, hey, this might be the problem, they send a note back to us saying, oh yeah, right, I was previously just visiting Australia, changed the, the VPN server, and forgot. So, I mean, this is kind of a bit of a hokey example, but you get the picture that you've got all of the data there to help you troubleshoot issues like this. Um, so if I jump to the next example I was going to show was uh, the SaaS monitoring example. So let's say I want to know more about Salesforce and, and how it looks in my environment. Uh, I can jump to, let's see, reports. And here we go, Salesforce deployment. And let's start here. This is kind of where I had an interesting example to look at for you guys. So just to explain what you're looking at while it's loading the data is, this is a, a map that is giving you the average response time to any Salesforce domain that our users have gone to, just color-coded in a stoplight fashion to start to give you a sense of uh, you know, where might I be having end-user experience problems with people who are connecting to Salesforce. Now, keep in mind, like I've mentioned, this data is going to be kind of volatile and depending on when people are going where and, and you know, the underlying network experience. So we don't have a huge deployment. If this was thousands of machines, this data would smooth out, as you'd probably expect, a little better. Uh, in this case, I need to be conscious that you know, one of these might actually only be a single sample or something like that. And that's kind of what I was going to show you. But you can see I've broken this up by the different geographic areas and how people are connecting. So we have an Austin sales office. We have you know, salespeople in Boston. Uh, someone was visiting Miami. Obviously, we have a lot of people in the Bay Area. I've also got a little different view here where I'm looking at uh, the average overall Salesforce uh, response time over seven days. And then I'm looking at it by office, so by site. So I'm looking at my San Francisco office, my Austin office, and this would have been my New York office, but I didn't have data at that point in time. So, um, but if I want to kind of dig into uh, this particular red bulb and see what that is, I'm kind of curious. So let me, let me dig into it. And what I'll do is I'll just go straight for Salesforce. And I'll go straight to the Dayton area where I saw that problem. And as I kind of prepped you guys for, uh, it's one sample. So it's probably not a major issue. But this is kind of an interesting one to look at because now you can actually see, well, whoever this was, it doesn't look like Salesforce was necessarily the problem. If I look at this link, I see that I'm, I'm getting you know, probably uh, an unacceptable delay on my first hop out through my ISP. So, I mean, not super useful in this case, but interesting to know this and to be able to explain it, right? Uh, lastly, uh, let's talk about everyone's favorite problem, which is Wi-Fi. So, <laughs> is there actually anything within the network that you guys don't troubleshoot automatically in a beautiful display like this? <laughs> yeah. There, there's gaps. I mean, we're, but but for the most part, I mean, this is this is what we're excited about is all of this information just at your fingertips is something that yeah we just haven't seen anywhere else, and so we think it's pretty exciting. Um, so here, yeah. let's have a look at. This is our Thousand Eyes office. This is a number of users that are that are connecting in uh, to to well, it's our Thousand Eyes environment, I should say. So it's our entire distributed network. But I can actually filter down. So you can see the usage pattern, right? This is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and everyone goes on break, and then they come back in. Uh, but let's just have a look. And then, and then you know, loss spikes in various places, and that's actually going to be what we look into here. Uh, if I jump to the Thousand Eyes SSID and say, show only agents using this node, now I can see, you know, these are the people who are in the office. This is, you know, the details about their connections, and then the details about the, the link the wireless link as well. And so everything looks good here. This is great. No problems. Let's jump to a place where I see a little bit of loss. And let's dig into that. So if I click here, and I go back and I do the same thing, which is show only agents using this node, well, it starts to look like a Christmas tree, right? So something's wrong. We don't know what. 
but, uh, but something's wrong. And it's not terribly useful because it's literally interleaved here where it's red, green, red, green, red, green. So I want to try and figure out, is there a pattern here or not? Or is my Wi-Fi just completely spotty? Well, we have this neat ability to actually not just look at the advertised SSID, but to dig deeper into the BSSIDs and the access points themselves. And so this is kind of that aha moment where, aha, one access point is the problem here. Uh, everything else is fine. In fact, all of them, so what you're seeing on the, re on the left side is, is the, the gateway loss. If I jump down, for instance, to the wireless signal quality, everything's fine. It's not, that, it's not that the machines can't connect to wireless. It's that the device itself or upstream is misbehaving. And so now you can understand that this is an isolated incident. You know where to, to dedicate your resources, and you know a lot more about the problem that you can go after it. So and how are you finding that access points bad like that? Are you integrating with the controller in some way? Or? No. So this is all coming from system information. <laughs> about the, the machine itself and what it knows about what it's associated with in terms of Wi-Fi, the signal strength that it's getting. This is all coming from the system itself. So this is all data from the endpoint agent? That's it? Just That's endpoint it. agent data? Yes. That's it. Yep. No other sensors involved? Nothing? That's no. right. There's no <laughs> magic. <on it. laughs> That's it. And so again, this is this, is this example of, you know, yeah. do you trust what your wireless access point tells you anyways? I mean, Half of the time, it says everything's fine and things aren't fine. Give me all the things. <laughs> Give me all the things. <laughs> so, okay, so I'm going to end there while, while uh, I'm going to pull a George on. Costanza and leave <laughs> what, on a high. Yep. I'm looking that you're trying to find the problem. Okay. Uh, as an expert, wouldn't it make sense to have a dashboard and to, to have the system tell you, you know, like you, you perhaps have an issue? Yeah, absolutely. And that's, I mean... There, there's kind of two portions to the answer here. Is number one is I focused here because it's really interesting data, but I did try to show you from the Salesforce dashboard. That's just a taste of what you can do with any of this data. So you can look at, you know, if you wanted to break it up by access points and look at the average signal quality, you can do that and see when it dips, and, and then ultimately. So we don't have alerting in here yet, but that's okay. one of the next yeah. things we're going to be doing. You can alert on those things is, yeah. is, is exactly the plan. Because this, this is uh, what, you know, the user, the system admin would need basically. Yeah. yeah uh, exactly. Rather than trying to find out where are the issues, you know, yeah. as to have him help him basically. Uh, and that, you know, this might be a problem and he can zoom in. Yeah. No, and that's, and that's exactly where we want to go. It's just we wanted to get the data in first. We wanted to get it so that you could troubleshoot and visualize it, and now we're focusing on how can we make it so that we surface it automatically for you and, and you know, pull out the meaning of it. I mean, a lot of these products show us, you know, we're detecting this, we're seeing this as a performance problem in this spot, and then, and then smart humans have to sit there and look at that and use that evidence to figure it out. Yeah. If you guys have some tab on the left there that says common issues and are saying, you know, we have all these devices with issues, we think this is a common problem. Yeah. And you know what? That is a absolutely perfect segue into Ricardo's next segment, which mm -hmm. is about network intelligence. Uh, it's about taking the totality of our data set and, and mining it and, and understanding what is actually the meaning behind this. And he'll talk about internet outage detection, which is a macro version of what you're talking about um, that we also eventually probably want to scale down as well. So, um, so that's all for me, unless you guys have any other questions, uh, or for Martin as well, he's the, the, the really technical guy. No? Thank you. Okay, we'll Is the endpoint agent licensed on a per agent basis? That's how it's licensed? Yeah, so, so good question. So if you know how the enterprise agents are licensed, uh, probably not all of you do, but it's essentially you have a maximum concurrent active set of agents that you're licensed for. So if I pay for, let's say, a thousand endpoint agents, I might deploy to 3,000, but I can activate and deactivate them as a, as a shared pool uh, so that, you know, as I have projects that are on the go or, or as I have trouble areas, I can kind of dedicate my resources strategically. Um, but again, obviously, oh, cool. we, we would suggest blanket your network and know everything. Of course. Yeah. And buy more from us, right? We, we, want, more of those, we want more of those dollar bills. 